Yeah. Hey everybody, welcome back to my next entry in the Best Picture Nominees Reviews of 2023. This time around, I am bringing you my review of All Quiet on the Western Front, directed by Edward Berger, written by Berger, Ian Stokel, and Jane Patterson. This film nominated for nine Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best International Feature, and Best Adapted Screenplay. It, of course, is an adaptation of the 1929 classic novel of the same name and one of the few film adaptations that we have had of this particular novel. Because, of course, the most famous and notable one is the 1930 version which ended up winning uh, Best Picture and I believe it was the first Best Picture winner to be adapted from a novel. And I'll be honest, I mean that film was considered a classic, never liked it. I've, I've never understood fully why everyone considers it to be such a classic. I get it was the first of its kind, it's influential uh, in the war genre, but it's hammy as hell, the, the acting is just so hammed up, uh, it's super melodramatic, and I think it violates one of the biggest rules of cinema, uh, which is show don't tell, and it definitely does a lot of over explaining and overcompensating and mixing all these elements together, it creates a really kind of tiresome, uh, overlong experience that just feels so fake. Uh, in so many ways, uh, at least when it comes to the acting and, and the execution of it. But I think that there are some truly uh, astounding moments in the film, which I will uh, get into. So, naturally, I was actually very excited. like Because I was like, obviously there's that argument. It's like, does a film need to be remade? And this is more so, not a remake, but an adaptation of that novel. Because Edward Berger was saying that it's like, it has never been seen from the German perspective. Yeah, it is about German soldiers. But, of course, the 1930 version was an American film in English, so he wanted to tell it from his perspective of his own people. And my goodness, guys, does this blow the original out of the water? This is, like, leagues better uh, than what was done in 1930. I love this film. Uh, I can see why this was the international film, at least to some extent, uh, that got into this year's Oscar race because it is so technically proficient on so many levels. And let's start off by talking about the cinematography, which obviously now I think is the front runner to win after the inexplicable absence of both Babylon and Top Gun Maverick, uh, which I didn't even mention in my Oscar video that getting so that's insane. Uh, but I think this film is so beautifully shot. The tracks, uh, the shot composition, the long takes. I mean, everything about this is what you want in a war movie. Sure, it's not Roger Deakins' 1917, right? I mean, it's not going to be that good. Uh, but still, it is so beautiful and so technically uh, crafted uh, and executed at such a high level. And then, of course, you have the score, uh, which I think was very deserving of its nomination that it got in that category. And just so pronounced uh, the way, like, in certain scenes, the heightened attention, you hear, like, a singular snare hit. And it really kind of, like, catches you uh, in your attention and draws you into the direness of the situation. Uh, even if it's just these recruits coming in uh, to this place and kind of getting ready uh, to, to go and getting geared up for the war, which obviously this movie demystifies the whole uh, idealization of within the first five minutes in the most brutal uh, and honest way you could possibly think of. And that's what I love about this movie. Unlike the original film, I, I feel like it wastes no time uh, pulling out the punches. And obviously you couldn't do a lot of this stuff. Uh, back in 1930. Granted, there is no shot in the film I think is as powerful as that hand that blows off onto the barbed wire. I think that was like the perfect example of visual storytelling in that movie. But it's okay because there's so many other uh, moments in this movie, so much darkness uh, that the first film doesn't even touch. And that's what I loved about this. Sure, you have seen war movies like this before, but I think this is one of the most brutal out of all of them. Think about the opening scene of Saving Private Ryan, uh, toned down a little bit, but for the entirety of the movie. 
that's basically what this film is and it is so hard to watch in, in some uh, certain aspects and certain scenes uh, just unbelievably brutal uh, and, and they really don't hold back there's one scene with tanks which oh my goodness the, the, like some guy gets like crushed under the weight I, I mean I don't want to get into it too much but you're going to see how brutal this film is I mean Yet again, so many great elements uh, when it comes to the technical side of things. Best sound could be a front runner from that if it weren't for Top Gun or Avatar. Uh, of course, you got to talk about the makeup. The, I think the makeup in this movie is amazing because when I first saw its makeup nomination, I was like, why is that? Because I hadn't seen the film. And then I realized, oh my goodness, this makeup is really incredible. And just the way uh, you, you see the layers get caked on uh, to our main character, uh, Paul, throughout the movie, it really is almost like a physical transformation within itself throughout the entire narrative as he endures these hardships of the war and I think there's just so much great work there the production design obviously recreating this period is is no easy feat uh, but just the, the the way they capture the trench warfare the I don't know if they had the original costumes but I think they might have so very authentic in, in that sense and I absolutely love this film from a technical level it is really firing off on all cylinders and then from a story perspective too I I, one of my biggest issues with the movie, I'll say, it isn't the most uh, lenient or, or is strong on story. It's more about the kind of like taking you through the viscerality of it all. But I don't think that really matters too much, uh, except in a certain spots where it really slows down. More so right before the middle of the film where it's just these guys hanging out and, and trying to enjoy their time while they're not, you know, almost being eviscerated on the battlefield. Uh, I absolutely... I uh, think that it could have been stronger in that sense, but my goodness, once you get to those war sequences, it is hard to take your eyes from. It is some of the most uh, honest brutality I've ever seen uh, in any movie, but especially uh, of last year, and it is just, my goodness, it is, as I said, executed so well in so many ways, and you know, understandably a, a lot more brutal than the original, which I think it absolutely needed to be, I think, a huge improvement. Uh, when you can kind of get away from that. But the thing is, like I was saying about the first movie, and I think this is why, because I've sat with this a couple of days now, why I love this version. There's one scene in particular that I think is very, very offensive, uh, just from a cinematic uh, standpoint in the first movie, that, as I was saying, show, don't tell. They have the scene in the, this movie, and all the character needs to say is like one or two lines, no monologue or anything like that to over explain the audience, and that's what happened. And I was like, yes! It's like, this is exactly what I wanted out of that original 1930 adaptation, which I did not get in this film more than completely makes up for it. And that's why I have to give this all the props in the world, because this is the way to make a better adaptation. Uh, and I think one of the best, if we are going to technically call it a remake, I think one of the best remakes of all time, because it really does expand on a lot of ideas uh, the first one didn't have. Another really brilliant aspect of this movie, though I know not everybody is huge on it, is how they showed the politics uh, uh, playing behind the scenes into this, because you have Daniel Brühl's character, and he's trying to like negotiate uh, with the French uh, to kind of like start an armistice, and you really see kind of like the strings uh, behind the curtain, if you will, being pulled and not being pulled in some case, because there's like this German general where you see him living this high class, lavish lifestyle while all these other young boys are getting slaughtered out in the battlefield, and I think it really is uh, a damning uh, statement on, um, you know, bureaucracy and, and just so many, uh, you know, just people in power not even being affected by this at all, yet they're the ones who give these commands to send all these millions of people to their deaths, because obviously millions of people died in this war, as we know, and it is just a really refreshing standpoint, because I really haven't seen that in a war movie before like this, in the way it's presented, even though elements of this film seem very familiar in other sense. I thought they really, really nailed that down. And we gotta talk about the performances, because there aren't like too many memorable uh, faces in this except Daniel Brühl who I I mentioned and, and he's great and everything as you would know by this point in time but I think the one who plays the lead Paul Felix Kramer 
uh, is just absolutely phenomenal. I, I think, honestly, he could have been nominated for an Oscar and it would have been uh, better than nominating Tom Cruise even. Uh, I really think what he has to go through, even though his performance, his character could have been a bit deeper, I think the way he portrays the horror of war uh, through this one young soldier's eyes I think is absolutely incredible. Uh, he absolutely is one of the standout leading performances of the year. Would have been nice to see him nominated but hey uh, definitely nothing to scoff at and good page to have on your resume. I think a lot of people in, in this cast are, are really great and uh, could have gotten some acting nominations, but specifically him, I thought was really uh, tremendous. But just the way this film sets up these little uh, pieces of information is, is a good screenplay uh, you'd expect, because obviously this was nominated for Best Adapted Screenplay, and I think there are certainly better ones, but I definitely don't, uh, I, I wouldn't refute this nomination at all. I even think Top Gun Maverick is a better screenplay, so there you go. Um, but 1917 got nominated for uh, a screenplay, and that wasn't, it's really just visual tricks, so I don't know what that was about. But this got nominated once again. I think it might be more deserving of the award than, uh, than that. Because you see how the war affects certain people. You see what people do to themselves to get themselves out of this war. And just the brutalities that are enacted upon them are absolutely horrifying, as you'd expect uh, from a movie like this and in war in general. Uh, there's one scene with a pair of scissors. That's all I'll say. Uh, and I think that, if you've seen the movie and you know what I'm talking about, really was one of the most shocking moments in the movie. Well, maybe not shocking, but I mean, just, as I said, just seeing this, uh, these acts occur on film is really what makes this film stand out, uh, unlike the, a lot of movies that are like it. Because let's be honest, this is, this owes a lot to Saving Private Ryan. This owes a lot to 1917, which I think is still... Uh, the best war movie I've seen in years and I think that it really comes down to how much you are going to enjoy this film and the slower moments as well kind of took it down. I really had to sit and think if I love this movie and, and another thing that I will give uh, the original uh, film I think it definitely delved a lot more deeper into Paul's backstory uh, you know, and, and I think that that could have been something that could have been implemented here. And I also think the ending of the first film is just phenomenal, as much as I don't enjoy that film. Uh, and I think it's much more impactful and in tune with the actual novel, from my understanding, than the ending of this film. Though I still think the implication of this ending is uh, quite beautifully haunting. And I really think that it does stand out regardless, because I just kind of uh, left, you know, sitting there stunned. Uh, at the ending and honestly the more I talk about this movie the more I do enjoy it it's just not the most original film you've ever seen and that's all I can give it but you can understand why perhaps the Academy got swept up uh, in this film and one of the leading films and nominations I believe after everything everywhere all at once so that's kinda crazy and uh, yeah I you can totally see why after watching this it's not an easy movie to sit through uh, but, you know, just for the battle sequences alone, you have to see this movie. Uh, it is absolutely a fantastic film, and I can completely get behind a Best Picture nomination. And on that note, I'm going to give All Quiet on the Western Front an 8.5 out of 10. I mean, this is probably the best adaptation of this story. I haven't seen the um, the TV movie. I think it was made in the 70s. Uh, but, you know, whatever. It's a TV movie. This is might be the most expensive German film ever made from my understanding. And I am glad that the Germans finally got to tell their side of it. So leave it to them uh, to make a really great film about the war from their perspective. And it goes to show that even if you aren't on the same side, all soldiers experience the war in the same way. And I think that's the power of this story, and you really feel uh, for these soldiers in the situation. And I think that this is why this is such a powerful and timely story, uh, almost 95 years later or so. Um, just absolutely incredible. And yeah, guys, what did you think about All Quiet on the Western Front? Let me know in the comments below. Do you think it deserved a Best Picture nomination? Do you think it deserved all the technical uh, nominations that it got? I definitely think it does. And uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And of course, smash that like button if you like what you're seeing here. And subscribe to the channel if you're new on this video. we would really, really greatly appreciate it. I will bring you the review of Triangle of Sadness at some point. Don't know if I'm going to see that. 
uh, on rental or if I'm going to see it in the theaters, which would mean uh, if I did the latter, it would take a little while to get it uh, to you guys. But that review is definitely coming, as well as a bunch of other great content. Finally setting in the uh, top 100 greatest films of all time series, locking that into place with your votes. So that will be coming very, very soon, hopefully next week. Uh, can't be for sure, but I think that's going to uh, be how things play out. And once again, I want to thank you guys for tuning in, and I will see you in the next video.